Welcome back to the Godot course. The first and most important step of the game development journey is picking the engine you actually want to use to create your game. Now, there are so many game engines, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. We'll be using Godot for our 2D and or 3D games. Godot is a powerful engine with constant updates and is completely free. Even if you uh, publish a game to your chosen platform, you don't have to pay anything for Godot. This engine is capable of handling nearly anything for 2D development and its 3D capabilities are improving so quickly. Now, let's actually move into the website and have a little overview of what's available to us. A link to the website will be in the description. And from this point on, any extra resources or assets we plan on using, a link to those will also be in the description. So let's go to the website. I've got it loaded up for us already. And uh, we're greeted with this page, which is uh, actually a really cool page because this right here, every time I refresh this page, you're going to see a different game displayed. Now, these are games that have actually been created in Godot, which means you get to see a lot of different things. You get to see it's 2.5D isometric views, uh, again, 2D. I keep refreshing and you just kind of get more and more and more. Now, this page has the, uh, some download links for the latest version and the long term support version. We scroll down a little bit, we've got the news section, which is a really good thing to keep an eye on. I tend to pay attention to this uh, at least once a week to make sure I'm kind of up to date with the new changes that are coming. Sometimes uh, with pretty much any engine, you might be looking for a specific functionality that I may not have yet. So always paying attention is a good idea. A uh, little explanation of the engine. And honestly, there's a lot in this page to kind of dive into. Next thing we're going to actually look at is the features page. Now, this is where I say you can see a little bit more about what's been created. And you'll actually start to see some games that you probably recognize. Uh, Lumencraft, Halls of Torment, Cassette Beasts, Tail Quest Defense, Usagi Shima, uh, Resolution. There is one specific one that I'm looking for, which is uh, very, very well known now. And it is Brotato, created by Blobfish. An amazing game created fully in Godot, which is, uh, well, amazing. Now, if we scroll down, we can see some of the features of the engine, uh, how you can like build some kind of rough descriptions and examples of uh, why this engine is so kind of useful and so good. Now, picking an engine is actually quite important, and I don't just use Godot for 2D or 3D. I use it for a lot of different things because you can create pretty much anything in Godot. That being said, let's uh, talk about an example. Somebody has literally created the ability to edit and render videos within Godot. So you can really do anything with it. It's kind of amazing. Now, let's actually go and move into the download section. Now, this is where things can get a bit interesting, right? We have the engine version that we're going to be using. Now, I say a link for this will be in the description. A link for the website will be. And I'm going to probably package a little version of uh, the Godot engine here, the 4.13 version specifically. I'll have that linked just in case, uh, I don't know, two, three years down the line when they're on Godot five or something or six you will still have the engine version available to you that way you can come back use that version and learn that version most things don't tend to change but there can be some pretty big differences between those versions take godot 3 and godot 4 a lot of nodes had their names changed and a few different things now the godot version here this godot engine 4.13 that we'll be using is very different to the .NET version .NET version has, uh, it, says, it says here, C-sharp support, which means you'll be able to code in, instead of in the GD script language, you'll be able to use C-sharp. Now, if you are comfortable in C-sharp, I will eventually make another course about the C-sharp usage. But for now, we're going to be sticking with the normal version for GD script. So all you have to do is click the download button, and it will automatically download for you. Now, there is a donation button here. I always recommend after you've kind of learned a bit about this engine, if you're really enjoying it and you really use it, make a little donation to them. It keeps things free, it keeps the team happy, it keeps things running smoothly, which is great. Now, scroll down a little bit and look at the uh, requirements whilst that's downloading. The recommended is having Vulkan 1.0 compatible hardware. And the minimum is OpenGL 3.3 or 3.0 cable compatible hardware. Most computers will have a minimum will be able to use the uh, minimum settings for this. Now, the launching process of, of the uh, Godot engine may be a little bit different depending on whether you hit the recommended requirements or not. And I will also probably make another little video about that, and I'll put a link to that in the description too. Now, instructions, very, very simple. Extract and run. That's it. You download it, 
and it's already done. There's no need for an installation. You're just good to go. Now, if you want other versions of the uh, Godot for 36 or 32 bit, 64 bit, different version supports, I've got that right here. You can get this on itch, Steam, and the Epic Games Store. As it says here, though, the digital versions do not include .NET slash C Sharp support. So keep that in mind if you plan on using those languages. If we scroll down more, you get some Godot demo projects. Now, these are really useful for seeing some of the capabilities of Godot. These are some projects that people have put together that and they've kind of packaged them into this little demo thing so you can see different things of the engine, uh, how to do certain things or other capabilities. We've got the Android library, uh, the Blender support, uh, exporter, which is really useful, and then preview builds. Now, if you are just learning how to get into Godot, I would recommend staying away from preview builds and just sitting on this version, whatever version is the current supported version. And that is because preview builds tend to be a little bit more unstable. Uh, I used to use Godot 4 before Godot 4 was released, basically when it was in its preview state. It was a relatively calm experience. I ran into very few issues, but the new version of it, the actual released version of Godot 4, very stable. Now with this downloaded, let's move into our downloads here. You can see I've downloaded it before just to make sure things are running smoothly. I'm going to open up the folder and wait for my PC to stop running very, very slowly, which it apparently is deciding wants to. There we go. So this is what's in the download section. We get a .exe zip. All you have to do for this is you go to your desktop or wherever you want to store your engine, you can create a new folder, call it Godot 4, open up, uh, open up the uh, zipped folder, and then you just extract it into that new folder. Give it a second. There we go. Now I'm going to close this one out, and you'll see, and now I have the win64.exe normal and the console version. We will only be using the win64.exe. Console version is great for... If the engine runs into specific bugs, this can be used for debugging very well, but that's a whole other experience level when it comes to uh, learning how the engine functions. So with that done, we are now pretty much just ready to move on to like launching the engine and uh, kind of going from there and actually creating our first project. Now, one thing that I will keep in, or tell you to keep in mind is I've got this installed in three places on my computer. Now, the reason for that is because I have a removable SSD that I like to carry around, that way I can use it on a laptop or anything like that and I can keep my projects going. I have it on my primary uh, storage drive on my actual computer, the one that's built into it. And now I have this version, which is just on the desktop. Now, if I come down to here, you can see if I go into game dev, uh, not game dev, I actually <laughs> need to find it now. If I go into this uh, folder here called course, I go into the Godot 4 folder, you'll see I have these done. I also have a shortcut ready. Now, I do usually end up having a shortcut on my uh, desktop, but I've kind of hidden all those for now. Kind of clean up my desktop a little bit. I've also got it pinned in the bar down here so I can launch it anytime I want. And yeah, that's, that's it. That is the installation process of Godot 4. Now, this is a very powerful, very capable engine, and I really hope you uh, kind of look forward to kind of learning it and uh, learning its uniqueness because it is a very unique engine. Now, with that out of the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Godot icon, get it to launch. You're going to see all of the projects and the current one that I'm uh, working on as my primary project and a bunch of the video projects that I've worked on in the past. And this is where we're going to leave it. In the next part of this course, we are going to be opening up uh, or creating our own project and having a little look around the entire editor and kind of get a feel for it, start knowing where things are and start remembering things. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you then.